All dairy producers struggle with managing mastitis or somatic cell count at some point. It can be a complex and daunting task. Yet many dairy producers have learned how to implement the management practices it takes to minimize these problems. With that in mind, we decided to talk to the real experts, dairy producers from farms who do a good job of consistently maintaining a low somatic cell count. I started here in 96, uh, milking about 100 cows, and gradually expanded to 175. 2006, we doubled to 350. 2008, we went to 550, and we're presently getting ready to milk 650 to 700. Pretty much family. Uh, me, uh, my son, he sort of sees the cows. Uh, my wife's over the calves uh, bottle feeding. And uh, other than that, everybody pretty much spreads the chores out and try to catch up with it. My daughter's also involved. She helps with the books and feeds some. Our somatic cell count's 189. Most of the time, we're between uh, 180 and about 230. Right now, we're book tank averaging about 70 pounds. I think our rolling herd average is uh, something over 22,000. You know, if we keep a good uh, dry environment for the cows to live in, you know, we keep our equipment up and employees do a good job of milk preparation and are preparing the cow to, for milk and, and good tit dip, I, I think you pretty much got it. You know, it's about a, a quarter of a hundred on the milk check, so you know, that's pretty much all profit. And, uh, you know, you get more production from a cow that's not a uh, higher sale count cow. You know, deal with, one thing we hadn't mentioned is probably DHI testing something to identify those cows that are uh, maybe high in sale count. You know, you may have one, one cow of a hundred that's costing you a lot of money, you know, just on your, uh, where you get your quarter. We have a double 12 higher, or parallel. Uh, we just put in last year in 2008. Uh, so we got automatic takeoff, uh, you know, and it's, of course, it's all co computer controlled, so, you know, we're able to change um, the times that they milk after the last milk goes in or anything we need to change. Uh, it's, not, it's not one big thing that you're going to do to bring your somatic cell count down. It's just uh, you're going to have to do make a few changes maybe in everything you do if you're having that problem. Being able to get the, the cow dipped and, uh, and give the tit dip proper time to uh, clean, uh, work, and then wipe it off and get the milker attached in, a, in somewhere around that minute to minute and a half range has, has really uh, helped, has lowered ours to somewhat. We've been able to see a difference when we did that. You know, just a good tit dip and a good uh, proper cleaning of the very end of that tit is, uh, that's probably one of the things that's lowered our clinical cases of mastitis as much as anything and probably may think over the long time will help your uh, somatic cell count. You know, it's not, may not gonna show up in uh, 10 days or two weeks, but if you'll continue doing that uh, 30, 60 days down the road, you'll see a difference wear gloves uh, all the time. Uh, probably didn't, we didn't used to, they asked for them. Uh, we keep gloves here all the time. And uh, I think that that's another thing it seems to, you know, that that bacteria can't live on that plastic but only a few minutes and on the skin it can live for hours. So, uh, you know, anything you can do to keep that from passing on to another cow. We pre-dip with uh, peroxide and post-dip with its iodine barrier dip. Something that has a lot of uh, emollients in it or something. You just have to do all the, try to do all the little things and stick with the program. But, you know, if, if you've got a good place to keep those cows comfortable, uh, that'll help your somatic cell count. Just, just a comfortable cow. Keep her clean and dry. And probably the most important thing, I think, is done right there in the parlor. My advice is, is, is keep your cow comfortable as possible in whatever uh, facility you have, keep her dry as possible, and just do a real good job in the parlor. I think you can see more changes if you do a good job in the parlor. That was our experience. Uh, they seem to really get it down there and keep it consistently down there. Keeping stalls clean and uh, keeping our compost barn turned every day, twice a day, and not letting it get too wet, keeping it composting. It's a very, 
very uh, hard job, but uh, you got to get it done or you'll have a very high somatic cell count problem. Being, not being crowded, overcrowded has helped us a lot. We were overcrowded and uh, we had a little problem with our somatic cell count going up because it was hard to keep stalls clean and cows clean. We dip our cows, strip our cows, then wipe our cows. The same procedure three times a day, every day. We're, I'm very strict on uh, stripping cows out because that lowers somatic cell count probably as much as anything. We take two strips out of every quarter. Everything we do is through PC DART and it's got about everything that you can think of on it and we use it very strictly. And that gives the premium on the milk check <laughs> and uh, you just have less problems with forest treating cows. Most of them are house freestyles. We do have one bedded pack. Uh, we put our fresh cows in. Uh, try to keep them bedded good. Uh, they rake them, clean them every, every uh, three times a day uh, when they get the cows out. Uh, rake the manure out. Uh, just keep them dry. Yeah, really, you know, can you tell the difference even in the, the one that has the alley scraper where it's probably scraped, uh, it's scraped about eight times a day. That it's not as hard to keep those stalls uh, clean and dry and and, uh, and the dust in them and, and keep it's easier to maintain it really. The main thing we do, we do we do a JVAC uh, vaccination and, and dry treat treated cows all in, in a group that's dumped last. Uh, if we have a pretty good amount of mastitis we catch it, we treat uh, immediately. So, and the same like the quicker you get on it the better you get it knocked out. Then if you've got a mastitis cow that's um, carrying some extra mastitis or contamination, you know that milker's milk. Uh, most of the time we don't have but uh, less than 24 at any time, and most of the time less than 12. And uh, those milkers are milked that cow, the milk's put in the floor, the milkers are then, you're, it finished milking or washed so you don't have as much potential to contaminate your other cows. You know, or if you keep them mixed in or in another time, you may contaminate 20 cows from one cow. And I think we've done a lot better job of uh, probably keeping our, everything clean. You know, washing every milk and uh, even the dipper bottles, you know, we wash those. That, that's helped a lot. Especially if you've got Hispanic labor. Uh, most of them will do a good job, but they don't understand why. So once they understand why, then they're more willing to do what you're telling them because they understand why you're telling them that and you're not just trying to tell them something to do to keep them occupied, that they're doing something for a reason to help everybody. So we just try to uh, just compliment them well that they did a good job. And, you know, if, if they do good, tell them they did good and if they're not doing good, say, hey, you know, this, this is not what you're supposed to be doing. And, uh, you know, just I like to treat them like I'd like to be treated and, and uh, you know, Give them just a little bit of, of uh, something to look forward to. And they seem to enjoy that real well. Just, just equipment maintenance and uh, good milking procedure has probably been, milking procedure probably will help as much as any other thing that you can do. Doing a good job of, of cleaning that teat in and doing a good job of dipping that tit uh, when she leaves the parlor. Extension, research, and academics at the University of Kentucky College of Agriculture. <laughs>